as a Christian, what you are facing that looks negative, that seems negative, will be used by God to release you into your divine destiny. Where then is there room for negative thoughts? Greetings in Jesus' name. Hi everyone. Welcome to another edition of Take Care of Your Heart here on God's Heart TV. A time for us to dig deep into the living Word of God. And I pray that God would bless you richly as you join me to watch a short excerpt from a sermon I was privileged to share at the Synagogue Church of All Nations simply titled, How to Overcome Negative Thoughts. Be blessed as you watch in Jesus' name. Negative thoughts will come. Don't entertain them. Now, how can I try and illustrate this for the benefit of people? Can I have one volunteer? Any volunteer if the Lord puts it in your hearts. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now, I want to de demonstrate to you the danger of negative thoughts. They will come, but what do you do when they come? My right, brother, what is this? It's a fruit. It's a fruit. This is a coconut. I'm going to give it to you. Now, I want to see a genuine reaction, okay? If I told you that this that you are holding in your hands is a bomb, what would you do? Thank you. Let's, let's put our hands together for him. Now, wh why did you take that action? I got scared. He got scared. Why? Why? If you held on to that bomb, what do you think would have happened to you? Uh, it would have exploded in my hands and, and it would co I would die. Yes! It's dangerous! It's deadly! The moment the awareness came that this, even though it looks like a coconut, it looks like a fruit, but this is a bomb, the moment the awareness came, you get rid of it! Harboring negative thoughts is like holding a bomb. Don't wait for it to explode before you get rid of it. Look, they will come. They must come. This is the world we're living in. The Bible says in this world there will be trouble. In this world there will be hurt. In this world there will be pain. It's parts of life. They will come, negative thoughts, but don't harbor them. Don't keep them. Don't allow them to stay in your hearts. Now, let me pick up this bomb. Let, let me show you what many of us do. Now, this is what many, many of us do. I just want you to examine yourself. So, I hope this can fit in your pockets. Put this in your pockets. So what is in his pockets? It's a coconut. It's a coconut. <laughs> to him, yes, it's correct. He thinks it's a coconut. Many of us, what we do is we keep poison in our pockets. And then when trouble comes, we look for imaginary enemies to blame. Are you with me? You are the one that allowed the negative thoughts. You kept it. You concealed it. You kept it with you. But when trouble comes, you begin to look for scapegoats. When trouble comes, you begin to point fingers. When trouble comes, you begin to blame. When trouble comes, you begin to say, my family is this, my family is that. But you are the one that has kept poison in your pockets. By harboring, holding, keeping, entertaining, allowing these negative thoughts to remain in your hearts. Why do we do this? Because many of us no longer recognize evil as evil. We don't see the world through God's eyes. It looks just like an ordinary fruit to us. We say there's no harm in this. Negative thoughts come. You say there's nothing wrong. You begin to brood on them. You begin to keep them. You begin to entertain them in your privacy. You begin to think about them, plot and plan. And what you are doing is destroying yourself. The problem is not around you. The problem is in your pockets. My brother, you can keep, keep the coconuts, okay? Go and have your seats. <laughs> keep it.
Right now, I want to tell you people of God, enough is enough. Tell your neighbor, enough is enough. In fact, I want you to rise up right now. We are going to make a declaration together. Rise up to your feet. Viewers, rise up. Wherever you are watching, rise up. Right, we want to make a declaration right now because enough is enough to entertaining evil in our hearts. Right now, say after me, you devil. I want you to say it with passion. Say, you devil. You devil. I refuse to submit to your deception. I refuse to listen to your lies. I refuse to surrender to negative thoughts. They will come, they will come, but they will not stay. But they will not stay because, because there is no space in my heart for evil. There is no room in my apartment for evil. There is no chance in my life for evil because, because sin's power over me is broken. You listen to the anointed song, sin's power over you is broken. You don't have to allow negative thoughts to control you. You don't have to allow negative thoughts to take hold of you. They will come as they come, get rid of them. As they come, reject them. As they come, rebuke them. I will not be overcome by evil. I will overcome evil with good. You may have your seats, people of God. I want you to make that your confession. Negative thoughts in itself is not deadly. It becomes deadly when we harbor, hold, and keep them. Why? Because when you harbor these negative thoughts, you hardly know that you are trapped. That's the worst kind of imprisonment. When you are imprisoned without knowing you are trapped. This is what Satan wants to achieve. He wants to see you believe that you are free whereas you are imprisoned, trapped. And you are the one that has locked your own chains by allowing, permitting, entertaining, giving audience to the lies and deception of the devil. So often today, because we don't look at the world through God's eyes. Our hearts have become so distracted, disconnected from the word of God that we no longer recognize evil as evil. We no longer see what is sinful as what is sinful. We harbor, allow these things. Because of this, we are blind from reality. L let me tell you some reality. When I say reality, I mean truth. There is no reality outside of Christ. When many of us are hurt, we behave as if we are the only ones that have ever been cheated. We behave as if we are the only ones that have ever been wronged. We behave as if we are the only ones that have ever been lied against. That's the way we react. Someone just wrongs you. He, he, you are, Immediately, Satan will introduce those negative thoughts. How can this guy say this about you? How can God allow this to happen to you? You begin to agree with him. Yes, it's true. Why me of all this? Why am I facing this? Listen, people of God, do you know the reality? Everyone has been hurt. Everyone. As far as we are living in this world, it will happen. But we forget the reality because we're blinded from the truth. And that's why we begin to react. How can this happen to me? What is going on? Harboring negative thoughts, allowing, entertaining negative thoughts. And all of this is diverting our destiny. Because we, we behave as if we're the only one that has ever happened to. It happens to everyone. If you are cheated as a Christian, leave it for God. He will vindicate you. You are wronged as a Christian, leave it for God. He will defend you. You are lied against as a Christian, leave it for God. He is your judge. But today, one lie against us, we hold offense. 
We, we can look at God in a bad light. We begin to harbor negativity. Before you know it, it gives birth to negative words. Before you know it, it gives birth to negative actions. Before you know it, you have gone astray from your walk with the Lord. Whereas it happens to everyone. Listen, there is no one in this world without a situation. Everyone has a situation. It has life. This is the reality. You've come here today for prayer for a particular trouble. By the time God touches that trouble and removes it, don't worry, another trouble will come your way. That's life. If we didn't have these troubles, perhaps we wouldn't have the, the zeal for God. These things remind us, create a sense of dependence on God. But today we behave as if we're the only one that's in trouble. We react as if no one else has passed through what we're passing through. We respond as if we're the only one. God is, is dealing with us unjustly. God is dealing with us unfairly. Why is it happening to me? Why is this going on? And this what causes us to entertain and harbor negative thoughts in our hearts. So as I round up, I want to tell you this simple truth. If you are a Christian... The situation you are in that seems negative will have a positive result. Where then is there room for negative thoughts? Your situation is not like others. If you're a Christian and you're facing setback, your setback is a setup for breakthrough. If you're a Christian, you're facing failure, your failure is to prepare you for success. You're a Christian, you're in your dark moment, your troubling moment. Your dark moment will make you to value, see, and appreciate the light by the time it finally comes. Perhaps you're sick today. By the time healing comes, God will have helped you to manage your good health. You will know and value the appreciates of your good health. What am I saying, brethren? Just as Joseph said to his brothers in Genesis 50 verse 20, he said, you intended this for evil, but God allowed it for good so that his purpose will be accomplished. What you are facing today that seems negative will be used by God to accomplish his purpose in your life. What you are facing today that looks negative, is it barrenness? Is it trouble in your workplace, marital issues? Are you facing sickness that doesn't seem to respond to doctor's treatments? Are you facing this? Are you facing that as a Christian? What you are facing that looks negative, that seems negative, will be used by God to release you into your divine destiny. Where then is there room for negative thoughts? In what will end in a positive outcome? Romans 8 verse 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who love God. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say success. It doesn't say breakthrough. It says all things work together. So what is the way out now? What is the way out? When negative thoughts strike, run to God. What Satan intends to take you away from him will actually end up moving you closer to him and you overcome. When negative thoughts come, don't entertain them. The moment you recognize this is evil, this is wrong, this is negative, run to God. Seek God. As Romans 12 verse 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. James 1 verse 17 says, every good and perfect thing comes from above. When negative thoughts strike, let your heart rise and seek the things that are above because sin's power over you is broken. Hallelujah, sin's power over us is broken. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the price that you paid on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious living word. Thank you, Jesus, for your beautiful works of nature. I mean, look at that sunset viewers. Glory be to God. And as Matthew 24 verse 35 says, Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. And that's why we must embrace the wonderful word of God as the most effective instrument for change. As the word of God 
dominates your heart as it becomes a part of you as it gets into your blood. You will discuss the one who is fighting for you instead of your battle. You will focus on your comforter instead of your enemy. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, once again for your living word. And thank you for joining me today, viewers. And you can actually watch the full message, How to Overcome Negative Thoughts, on my other channel, Official Brother Chris. We'll put a, uh, we'll put a link in the description below. And remember always, when, when negative thoughts strike your heart, quickly run to God. And of course, seek God's heart to see life clearly. God bless you, viewers. <laughs>